myself, I'm Venu. I have around uh, 16 years of experience into the field of HR, where initially I've started my career as HR executive for one of the manufacturing industries. And then from there, I've moved to SAP HCM implementations. After working on SAP HCM for a couple of years, like four to five years, moved to success factors, and it's been almost like eight years that I'm into success factors now. And in these eight years, I've handled modules like employee central compensation, RCM, and PMGM. Though I have worked on all of these modules, I'm more comfortable in employee central and compensation because I've spent most of my time in these areas. So I have certification in these two modules, active certification in these two modules. And when it comes to teaching, I've been I'm into teaching from last 10, 12 years. I used to train on SAP HCM earlier. Later, after moving to success factors from last six years, I'm into success factors training as well. Okay, so that's a quick round of introduction about me. What is success factors? Can somebody tell me what is success factors and what are your expectations from success factors? success factors can anybody tell me um, it is a global uh, erp platform uh, like you know you have soho zoho people you have a lot of hrms so likewise sap is an erp product the cloud based uh, application sap is an erp product but sf is not an erp what is erp Enterprise resource planning. What do we do? ERP is now when do we call an application as ERP? When you have all of the modules which are required for the organization. It could be finance, marketing, production planning, material management. So all of this, if you have all of these modules in one application, we call it ERP. For the enterprise, whatever resources that we want to have, Okay, if you have all of them in one application, we call it as an ERP application. But success factors is a HRIS application. HRIS meaning human resource information system. So mainly used by the HRs of the organization and also by all the employees of the organization. Okay, to apply leaves or to look at their employee data or to look at their you no know, leaves or to apply or to apply leaves or to like to check the balances or to check their holiday calendar or to download their pay slips or to look at their compensation details. So all of this information is available in HR data. Now let's, before even going not in depth into success factors, let's understand what a HR does in the organization. Okay, so can somebody tell me what a HR does in the organization? I have to First retire. I have to retire, okay. So HR looks after the hire to retire data of employees, right? So what do we do in hire? So let's start with hire. What do they do in hire? Closing On board, introduction. Yeah. Yes. So after all the process of you know, closing down the requisition or you no know, finalizing the candidate, let's say we have an open position which needs to be filled. So first they will be posting that job in the market. So if you have, you no, know, if you are associated with Nokri, Monster or some other applications or in your own portal, if you want to post that requisition, you'll be posting that. And candidates will be applying on that position, on that requisition, it's not position, it's on, on the requisition. And the recruiter will go see who has applied on that position, on, the, on that requisition and then schedule the interviews for some of the candidates okay and those interview and, and those candidates will be interviewed in multiple phases and then finally one or two candidates will be offered once candidate accepts the offer letter if you have onboarding you will also do the onboarding formalities on the day of hire you'll be hiring the employee into the system or if you don't have any system at least you'll be collecting some information. So what kind of information we collect from employee? Or a candidate, before a candidate becomes an employee, 
we'll be collecting some information from the employee. What is that? I would say demographic uh, information. Experience and, letters. And previous. What are all these? I can, can I call them personal documents? documents. documents. Can I call it as a personal documents. information? Yes. Yeah. Uh, all of that belongs to employee. Now that can contain the name information of the employee, date of biographical information like the date of birth of the employee, country of birth or the nationality of the employee. And then the ID information, if you are in India, you may be collecting either PAN card or Aadhaar card, which is the national ID. If you are in US, you'll be collecting the social security number, okay? Tax file number or no, whatever it is for that specific to that country, okay? We'll be collecting the formal education details. What is the candidate's education background or the previous experience details and then the contact information, address information. So all of this information, we call it as a personal information because that belongs to that candidate, right? Some of them, maybe some of this information will be taking the scan copies, right? Wherever needed, it could be the ID information or it could be the address for proof or it could be the uh, education details. So we'll be collecting all of these information. If you don't have system, what you'll do, you'll file all of this into one folder. Like right? you take a file, personal employee file, then add all of these documents into, including the offer letter or will come to offer letter and appointment letter. Okay, In including all of this, you make a file and keep this file for that employee. And you will be assigning a ID for that employee, right? Every employee in the organization will have a personal identification number, okay, or a number, personal ID number. Okay, it could be, a different series for different organizations. Some may have it as four digits, some may have it as six digits or seven digits or eight digits or 10 digits, depending on the organization. Nine series, eight series, seven series or six series, or if you have different employee categories, like you have regular employees or a contractor or a trainees or you no, know, or part-time employees. So you can also have different series of the employees. So after collecting all the personal information, you should also see what or which ex which company are we hiring this employee? Let's say a company has got multiple small companies or we have in various departments or we operate from different locations. So we need to identify the requisition details and add all of the employment details as well. All of these are the employment details. Like your hire date, the start date of the employee, the person ID of the employee company of the employee, location of the employee, department of the employee, grade the employee is in, the working hours that the employee is going to work, okay, the position title or the job title that the employee has. So Person, all of uh, these is employment details. These are called the employment details. These are, S these are companies details assigned to employee. We call them employment details, which also contains your compensation information so after all of this you'll also maintain compensation information this is also this also belongs to employment okay so we can also have it as a separate entity or separate section in compensation details whatever has been offered to this candidate like if you look at the appointment letter or the offer letter you will see the breakup of the salary so different companies or different countries have different pay component structure pay structure okay now within the organization, you can have different pay structures for each grade. Maybe for interns or trainees, you only pay stipend. For managers, you pay some set of components, basic HRA, special elements, and medical. And then CEO or directors, you have a different structure. So you, you can have different components in it. Okay, so all of this is maintained somewhere in the system or somewhere in the file. If you are not using any application then you'll be having all of this data for each employee in different files or different folders right now to streamline 
if you have hundreds or thousands of employees, it is very difficult to manage all of these things separately or, or as a hard copies. So if you have lesser employees like 50, 60, 70, 80 or 100, you can have, you can maintain all of this data in Excel also. But the problem is anybody can navigate or anybody can access these files or anybody can change the data in the Excel. Right. Once you change the data, you don't know what was the data that was existing, existing earlier. You don't know this. So you cannot track all of this information. But if you have an application where, you know, if you have a software where you maintain all of this data in the system, system can track all of those changes. You cannot, no, anybody can just, you know, cannot just log into the system and modify the data. You will have the restricted access. So people or HR can control this data, all of this data, because personal information or employees information is very confidential and you should not be exposing it to others. Okay, so all of this data will be doing it in the one of the HR applications and success factors is one application, one HRS application which provides all of this information. Now, after hiring the employee, then what do you do? You have hired the employee, you have ID of the employee, you have hired date of the employee, you have maintained personal information, you have maintained employment and compensation. Now, after, between hire and retire, you may perform multiple actions. You, or you may perform multiple transactions, like it can be a transfer, maybe, if the employee is to be transferred to now what is a transfer what is a transfer so based on the business requirement like there may be like business unit wise or location to locations or interdepartment so if an employee is being exchange. moved from a location to locate one location to other location or one department to other department or one business unit to other business unit, one company to other company, inter-company transfer, one country to other country, international transfer, country transfers. Okay, or from one manager to other manager. That is called a transfer. So depending on the business requirement, we can configure these transactions or we call them as a events in success factors. Okay, so you'll be performing all of these actions. And you can also have promotion. What is a promotion? What is a promotion? No idea. What is a promotion? Okay. Promotion is uh, like next level upgradation. Yes. If an employee's grade is moved from lower to higher, employees moved from a lower level to higher level or lower grade level to higher grade level we call it as a promotion okay grade level change lower to higher it can also be higher to lower yes or no what is that called demotion employees performance is not up to the mark we may also demote the employee Yes, sir. What is that? Again, that's a change in the grade level, but higher to lower. These are all actions. These are some of the actions. There are around 20 to 25 standard events in success factor system. Okay, so we have higher transfers, promotions, probations, global assignments, terminations, suspensions, data changes, position reclassifications, and so on. So, and at the end, maybe if one day if employee wants to leave the organization, you may have to process the termination request. Termination can be a voluntary termination or it can be an involuntary termination. Voluntary meaning employee themselves coming and saying that we don't want to no, work anymore or we have found a better opportunity, we want to leave the organization. So they'll, they'll submit their resignation and they'll exit from system it may also happen that after once the employee is terminated 
employee may also join back the same organization maybe after some time now when you're rehiring someone so all of this data is already available in system maybe we don't have to update all of this information again because it is the same candidate if it is a new candidate you'll have to fill all of this again but if we are rehiring someone who was in the system earlier we may use the same id we may use the same personal information we may use the same employment sorry employment details may change okay we may use the same information like your contact or address or formal education or previous experience and so on you can add on to the existing data education let's say if that employee has pursued some other degree or some other you no know, certification we can add that we can add the additional experience detail that the employee has or if the employee has moved or to a different uh, you no know, address we can also update the address but mostly you have all of the information available in the system we can use that right so all of these things we will be doing in one of the system so how does system know or where does system store all of this data so when you are rehiring a candidate so system identifies this that this employee exists in the system right how does system know that this employee worked earlier in the organization because all of this data is stored somewhere in the system right so what do we use to store the data simple example if you want to download some songs or some you no know, files from internet into your mobile how do you do we go to that particular website or you no know, maybe someone has shared some file with you a recorded file or a song or or it could be anything where does it get stored in your mobile internal data internal memory internal memory okay sometimes it may happen that because of too much of data in your mobile all your data internal database internal data so internal data whatever the hard disk or whatever memory that you have if that is full so what do you do either you go clear up some data or you move your data from internal mobile to somewhere into cloud or into your drives right if you are using uh, iPhones or if you are using Android iPhones you have that iCloud or if you are using Android or if you are using you no know, Gmail or Google you'll have a Google Drive you can move some of your files to Google Drive and then you can free up some space can you open the file what exists in your mobile in some other mobile or in some other you no know, laptop or any of your personal computer no without connecting no you cannot because that is stored in your internal memory the same with your personal computer when you store some files you will not be able to move or you will not be able to see them in a different system right but if you have stored your data somewhere in your drives could be google drive or icloud or it could be anything or geo or whatever drives that you have can you access them yes we can yes we can so how do we access them through internet through internet yes. okay and every like if you are accessing google drive okay google gives you some amount of space for free a beyond that space it will say that you need to pay some amount okay if you are using same thing with your you know, iphones so when your 
your if your iphone is not backed up the system keeps you reminding that you move all your files into drive or copy or back up your phone so that all of this data get sits in your drive and tomorrow if you exchange or if you move your or if you are not switching to a new a new phone you don't have to again you no know, copy or do anything you know system picks up from the drive all of the data from the drive right so how is this happening so you can access this only if you have connected to internet and where is this data sitting when you say drive where is it sitting there some, somewhere there should be some servers which are giving you that space right the same concept we use in success factors success factors is a cloud computing application so what is a cloud computing application cloud computing application is nothing but a system or an application which uses the remote servers to store process and manage data sap is not sap hr is not a cloud computing system sap hr is a on premise application it uses the data in you no know, it uses or it stores the data in a physical server you can see that server now in your system if you are saving the data that means it is getting stored in the physical internal storage in your hard disk when you are storing the data in drive that means it is somewhere in the cloud which can be accessed from any corner of the world if, if tomorrow if you give this credentials to someone who is sitting in us they can also open your or tomorrow you have traveled to us or australia you can still be able to access that data from that country as well if you are connected to internet but if you want to access the files that are stored in your personal computer no you will not be able to if you don't have your system with you you will not be able to access right so in the cloud computing all of the data gets stored in a servers okay which are not visible to us no you will not be able to see them physically these because these are hosted remotely somewhere in the cloud okay so that's called the cloud computing cloud computing also follows the similar structure called the infrastructure platform and an application any application that you want to develop the first thing that you need is the infrastructure any data that is getting stored okay so firstly you should have the infrastructure where you want to store it and then secondly the platform if you are planning to build a, or if you are planning to develop an application the first thing that you need is the infrastructure you should have the space and then comes your platform on which platform you want to build is it android is it you no know, for you no know, apps or, or is it you no know, your apple systems or for windows or for you no know, .net what is the platform that you want to build the application in and then the third layer would be your application the final application what you want to see depending on this structure the cloud computing model has been divided into three models cloud computing or cloud services have been divided into three models infrastructure as a service the customers who want to use just the infrastructure they can go with the cloud computing infrastructure models amazon web services is an example of it where they only provide you the required server space now if i have i'm planning to have you no know, planning to develop an application which i want to use it for my employees you now my employee count is 1 million so i want to develop a software so i might need their a huge amount of space maybe 100 tb or 1000 tb so procuring servers servers are very expensive expensive so there are two ways of doing it you procure your own server have that data in that server or 
instead of procuring the server look for the available services like aws or you no know, you have you no know, other services where they provide only the servers instead of procuring you are paying or you are subscribing for that space for a period maybe for one year or maybe for five years and after three years or after four years if you want to renew you want to still continue with that you can go renew the subscription you don't want to use it after two years because you have some other plans you can move away so that way you are saving lot of money on these servers instead of procuring servers now when you have your own servers you will have to have some team looking after your servers you should have some space dedicated space to have those servers implemented servers installed and then from there you need to connect all of your servers with either local area network or if you have vpns you should be connecting it through vpns and many things that you will have to do on your own second is a platform as a service some customers want to go with the existing platforms available existing platforms let's say i want to build an application in android android is a platform i can go subscribe and you now use the android platform to build a game or to build an application and the third is a saas software as a service now here the application you are subscribing for an application the example is your success factors or a workday or a salesforce so these are available products in the market it could be for different purpose maybe salesforce i want to use it for my you know, marketing or for my you know uh, as a ticketing tool or it could be for anything else success factors i want to use it for hr application some other application i want to use it for my finance so there are different tools available which are software as a service mode okay you just have to subscribe you don't have to develop your own you go subscribe for the application then start using it you want to use it for 4 years 5 years use it for 5 years after 5 years if you are not happy with the product you can go with some other platform some other you no know, application you have a choice there if you are building your own application you don't have a choice you'll have to use it you want to scrap it then you no know, you're losing all your efforts money and so on then why would people go for cloud computing why not on premise there are many benefits of using a cloud computing application like success factors first and foremost is the productivity anywhere you don't have to be in office to you no know, update some data or you don't have to be in office or in front of your system to approve someone's leave or approve someone's transaction you can still access the data from any corner of the world tomorrow let's say you're in travel you're in a different country and someone has applied a leave someone has you no know, initiated a transfer or a promotion which you will have to approve you can still do it from your mobile as well you can have the success success factors application installed in your mobile and then you can access the data from that as well offsite data storage we are not storing the data in house we are storing the data somewhere in the cloud remotely no it maintenance cost because you are not procuring servers you don't have to have a dedicated space no to install or to no have the servers you don't have to ha hire any it team to look after your servers no it maintenance cost and then disaster resistance tomorrow if you own a server if something happens to your server it is your responsibility to fix it you have to fix it your team has to fix it but in case if you are using a cloud computing it is the service provider's responsibility it is always up there is no downtime you can use it for 365 24 by 7 365 days and then lower cost of ownership because you are not procuring server because you are not hiring any it people because you are not you don't have to have a dedicated space so obviously this 
cost that you spend on the cloud computing applications are very less when compared to on-premise applications and then easily upgraded every application that we use even a single uh, even a small application like a whatsapp or a facebook needs some kind of upgrades right whatsapp application what we are using now has many features initially when it start when it started we didn't had option of attaching a document or attaching a picture or you no know, some contact to it but now we have all of those features we can even send money from whatsapp because those are the features available now every year you no know, the every year or you no know, every now and then they are improvising the product they are including or excluding some of the new features or the old features they are removing so all of these are done through upgrades so this can be done in the success factors as well success factors has got a fixed releases or the upgrades which happens twice in a year you can see a lot of enhancements improvements in the product you can see the bugs being fixed every you no know, once in six months these are all the advantages of using a cloud computing application now what is success factors success factors is a hris product or a cloud based human resource information system we were calling it as hris system but now they have renamed it to hxm instead of hris now initially when sap hr started their implementation we had very limited modules in it we are only maintaining the data we are just processing the data but later they have started adding all the other modules like recruiting onboarding performance management compensation management all of this in sap hr they they started calling it as hcm application human capital management and success factors started we are calling it as hris application now we don't call it as hris we are calling it as hxm human experience management how an employee experiences the organization because we have lot of hr related modules in success factors what are those if you see this picture the core of the success factors is employee central the base of success factors is employee central because we maintain all master data which is required for all the other modules we have modules like performance management where we do the appraisals we have recruiting where we source the candidate we post the position we post the requisitions and then we source the candidates and then we have compensation module after appraisals depending on the employee's performance we may recommend or managers or planners may recommend some sort of or some kind of merit increases or the salary increases every year so that is done in compensation module and we have learnings if employees are required to take up some trainings they can do it through learning module of succession module see who can be promoted who is the backups of the employees that is done in the succession jam you have for social collaboration analytics you can report all the data one of your manager or your management says i want to have all of the employee data no is joined after so and so date and i want to have a particular grade employees or a particular location employees you go just report the data pull out okay so all of these modules are available and all of these modules need the master data and that data is stored in employee central we process that in employee central if you have to do appraisals who would be doing appraisal manager how will system know who is the manager we have that data maintained in employee central for which employee are we doing the appraisal system what are the goals of the employee what are the objectives of the employee what is the rating that last you no know, what was the last year rating or what was the five years back uh, you no know, rating of the employees so all of this data we store it in employee central what grade the employee is in what you no know, salary the employee has so all of this information is stored in employee central that's your employee central so in next coming days we'll be learning on the employee central there are various topics in employee central so the course is split into 25 sessions 24 25 sessions 
first four sessions would be completely of theoretical part like what is success factors what is certification in success factors who can do certification what is launch pad what are configuration workbooks what are implementation guides so we'll be discussing all of this the theoretical part which are required to know before you get into success factors and then fifth session onwards will be moving to practical part from there onwards from fifth session to 25th session we'll be doing everything in the system all of you will be given access to system one month access or till course completion which can be extended after the training as well we'll have one hour of session every day from fifth session onwards all of them are practical part we'll be discussing all the real time scenarios how do we hire an employee when hiring employee what are the customers requirement so how do we fit the customer requirements into into this screen so we will discuss various real time scenarios okay it's like a mini project we'll go each and every step in phases okay in the sequence of implementation what sap recommends okay so classes would be for monday to friday one hour every day saturdays and sundays we usually don't have sessions okay and then all of these are practical part i'll be sharing you all the access which can be used 24 by 7 i'll be giving you all material i'll be giving you all helping you out in the resume preparation wherever possible or you know, whatever topic that we are discussing you know, what are the possible interview questions or the certification questions so i'll be discussing that as well any questions clarifications that you want to have no no none adas no yeah if you don't have any questions we stop it here we'll have our regular classes coming soon no your coordinators will be you know informing you about the timing you can you know speak to them about the regular sessions will be starting probably from you no know, next week okay so after diwali and uh, if you have any doubts related to the course content i'll be sharing you the course content also all of you will be getting the course content email what we'll be covering in next 24 25 sessions okay no questions before closing out no sir no question sir sorry all no questions no thank you no no questions yeah, yeah. yeah thank you very much thank you for uh, no, all of your time thank you very much thank you thank sir. you happy diwali hope to see you all soon yeah happy diwali yes sir you too sir thanks